Political correctness is communist propaganda writ small. In my study of communist societies, I came to the conclusion that the purpose of communist propaganda was not to persuade or convince, nor to inform, but to humiliate. And therefore, the less it corresponds to reality, the better. When people are forced to remain silent, they are being told the most obvious lies. Or even worse, when they are forced to repeat the lies themselves, they lose once and for all their sense of probity. To assent to obvious lies is to cooperate with evil, and in some small way to become evil oneself. One standing to resist anything is thus eroded and even destroyed. A society is emasculated, liars is easy to control. I think if you examine political correctness, it has the same effect and it is intended to. And that is Theodore uh, Darmimple. That is a pen name. And if you don't know who that is, he is a uh, prison psych psychiatrist and doctor uh, over in England. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Bill. And this is All Minus One. If you guys like this kind of content, please like, share, and subscribe. Help me grow. Um, we could not get to uh, my live show this week, but I do have a live show with a co-host and producer uh, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. over on DLive because YouTube is ridiculous with censorship. And in fact, they may do such censoring today. So let's get into today's subject. Now, I've been talking about um, the personality traits and political proclivities this week, but I kind of wanted to take a sidetrack because I saw this, uh, this pandemic too, uh, today, and it was, it was quite good. Um, I wanted to show you just a part of it because it's very much of what I talk about quite often about the propaganda, about the social engineering, about the manipulation of your mind and how they want to, uh, make you weak so you cannot think for yourself. In fact, the quote here that I brought up originally is very much in line with what Alexander Solzhenitsyn said himself in his Gulag Archipelago and various lectures. The society gets comfortable with lying to one another. They pretend that is what people do when they are virtue signaling, political correctness, uh, mask wearing, any of the other kind of stuff. Um, some of it is out of fear. Some of it is they, they don't want to get in trouble. Uh, but much of it is uh, media manipulation and control of the masses. And there is a lot of media manipulation and control of the masses. Here's a perfect example of that. From The Guardian, this was from uh, July 31st, so it's a little old, but it says, um, and this isn't editorial, but I don't have an author here, but it says Donald Trump suggests that the 2020 uh, U.S. elections could be crooked is a challenge to democracy itself. And the whole idea behind this is, is that um, essentially that Trump is a bad, bad dude and, you know, delaying the election is not a good idea. But then we have this. By delaying the New Zealand election, uh, Jacinda Ardern appears magnanimous and conciliatory. And so this is the same paper, but because one of these people is orange, he is just, you know, it, he's he's evil and if he, how dare he how dare he try to take these elections and it's it's uh it's essentially it, it it's evil and he's trying to take things over. But this is how the media plays the game to manipulate your mind. They prop up who they would like. If you didn't know, the uh, Washington Post today, uh, or sorry, within the Washington Post, there was a uh, uh, advertisement for the Trump campaign. And there are many a journalist complaining that the Washington Post is lost and gone now because, oh my, they took the ad money. And uh, it, it, it's absolutely hilarious because the Washington Post is trash anyways in general. But let's get on to this uh, pandemic. So I just want to play a little excerpt from this, but it, it, it goes into some detail about what actually goes on behind the scenes. 
See, the problem with all of this is the evidence is right in front of our face. And when confronted with evidence, we are told fact checkers are somehow transcendent. The pace of our modern world makes it nearly impossible for working people to research the events and policies that shape their lives. When seeking answers to life's most pressing questions, where do we go first? Google. Enter the subject, hit go, and there it is. Only what they want us to see. In today's culture of copy and paste journalism, it's common for hundreds of unrelated outlets to feature the exact same report. This is also why, guys, you should restrict your usage of Google and start using uh, DuckDuckGo. Also so that your information isn't tracked and sold. This is not the result of laziness. This is by design. When we see identical headlines across seemingly unrelated platforms, the logical mind concludes, well then, it must be true. The illusion that numerous news sources have arrived at the same conclusion gives us confidence to share the chosen narrative. And just like that, we become the unwitting pushers of propaganda. Search engines are the holy grail for those seeking to control the narrative. Google. Now, if you don't recall, um, or maybe you didn't see, maybe you weren't watching what the information I'm putting out um, a few weeks ago when I started doing this, but uh, before I had my OBS system running on my computer because it was being funky, um, I, I was just a talking head in a box and I was reading off a lot of quotes and I spoke specifically about Edward Bernays and propaganda and what propaganda is and the point and use of propaganda and even uh, talked about Noam Chomsky's perspective on, on such an issue. Now, I'm not a fan of Chomsky's politics, but there is no denying that the man is highly intelligent. So the idea here is, is that we are not dealing in conspiracy theories. These are facts. These are conspiracy facts, people. When someone says conspiracy theory, they're trying to dismiss what you have to say and will not look at evidence and a person that, that is unwilling to look at evidence to to check their own bias or to to have new information come into them those people are lost there's nothing you can do with them solzhenitsyn himself said such a thing about the people in the gulag he was one of them for quite a while actually is already more powerful in terms of its control over people's lives than almost every government on the planet as the most influential search engine in the world, through its ubiquitous reach, Google has more power to influence U.S. elections than any foreign nation. You testified before this committee. You said in subsequent elections, Google and Facebook and Twitter and big text manipulation could manipulate as many... Now, Senator D Ted Cruz there is talking to Dr. Epstein, who did a uh, long review of the numbers and... And, you know, there's all this talk about Russia, which Russia did hardly anything for the election. The media did everything and Google and Facebook and YouTube and whomever else. But Russia had almost no influence on our election whatsoever. If you believe that, you have your eyes closed. He has 15 million votes in a subsequent election. And the methods that they're using are invisible. They're subliminal. They're more powerful than most any effects I've ever seen in the behavioral sciences, and I've been in the behavioral sciences for almost 40 years. The blacklists is something that Google said didn't exist, and they testified that under oath. And nothing but the truth. So now, if you want to look this up yourself, go to Project Veritas and look what they have uncovered. Again, no, no theories here, people, only facts. It's all I deal in is facts and data. Now and again, I might speculate, but uh, what is speculative is not, uh, is not necessarily theory. It's just an opinion of the, the uh, things unraveling as I may see them. I hope you got it. I do. Now, me as an engineer, I just did a search on Google's internal search engine, and guess what I found? It had blacklisted search terms like cancer cures. Why is Google deciding what people can and cannot search for? What was once an efficient tool for navigating the world of information is now a network for global surveillance, data collection, and social engineering. Now let's take a look at a few of the most commonly used fact checkers, beginning with Snopes. 
utter garbage, by the way. The husband and wife duo of David and Barbara Mickelson founded Snopes.com in 1995. They had no journalism background or training whatsoever. They built their fact-checking empire by using Google as their primary verifying source. The Mickelsons divorced in 2015. Barbara sued David for embezzling money that he allegedly spent on prostitutes, as well as a lavish honeymoon with his new wife, who worked as an escort in Las Vegas before joining the Snopes cast of characters. In 2017... Now, I wonder if many of you know this about the Snopes organization that is so widely used to fact check. Now, um, Tim Pool often will bring this up uh, about the fact checkers and it will be some obscure thing uh like for instance when trump said that that hillary acid washed her uh emails he was talking about a a specific program a specific thing that you can do not actually putting in it an acid so they fact checked it as false um this is just ridiculous it's a it's a figure of speech um there was some fact-checking of false here recently based on people's opinions. Opinions cannot be false because opinions are not a matter of fact. They are not true. They are not false. They are just opinions. David Mickelson's new business partners filed a lawsuit accusing Mickelson of multiple counts of fraud and embezzlement. Snopes proclaims to be the Internet's go-to source for discerning what is true and what is total nonsense. Yet one glance at their history of fact-free checking tells another story. When Dr. Mikovits claimed she was arrested without a warrant and jailed without a charge, Snopes rated her statement false. Had they bothered to explore the arrest documents, they would have seen that indeed there was neither a warrant nor signatures to officiate a charge, a fact that I confirmed with members of Dr. Mikovits' legal team. Was there a search warrant? No. And was she ever charged? No. Never talked with the client. 100% correct. Judy has never been charged with any crime. Facebook's fact-checking arm, PolitiFact, is owned by the Pointer Institute, which has received substantial funding from big pharma allies such as Google and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This is uh, this is what when I talk about corporate fascism, this is exactly what I'm talking about. These people, I'm not against corporations, people. I'm a free marketeer, but this isn't free markets. This is people having the control of uh, governmental institutions and what you think and, and, and how you're you're uh, you're receiving information. They go in and they lobby government and government allows them to do these things and is not stopped. And there are very few people that try to to uh, interfere um, Laura Loomer here recently was, um, won her primary in Florida for the Republican party. Now, Laura has been a, um, ha has been a little bit of a troublemaker over the years, stirring up things. Um, but she had been completely banned off of nearly all social media platforms. I believe she's on parlor now. But she's running in this primary in Florida and Comcast themselves would not allow her communications to go through. Would not allow her to use email or, or telephone or anything else. Now you tell me. We can talk about, well, they're private companies. They can do whatever they want. But do you really want them to have that kind of power or authority? It, you, you, do you understand what the government is there for? It is there to protect your liberty, not to allow these kinds of organizations to take your liberty away. This is the kind of stuff I, I, I talked about before in the cyberpunk world that people were worried about. They were worried about this corporate fascism, that, the, that, that these corporations would be far more powerful than the governments themselves. And that is exactly what we are seeing starting to unfold right now at this very time in history. The solution to this, however, is not to give the government all the power over the corporations either. That, that socialistic idea, uh, way does not work. You do not reduce power and control by giving more power and control. That's not, that's not the way to do it. Um, that's just a silly, silly uh, way to, to solve the problem. The way to solve the problem is largely to... Uh, restrict the amount of power and influence that they have. I would like to see a separation of economics and state, at least on the federal level. Uh, perhaps state level economic uh, uh, intervention could be, you know, had. But I would like to see a lot less 
intervention from the federal governments because again that, that form of wage and price control and all those other things have been done for uh, uh for all of human history and it does not work it, it just creates more problems so again what i would like to see is perhaps less of that less the involvement of the government uh, maybe some more restrictions. I'm not a huge regulation fan, but certain basic regulations are important. Uh, that's, you know, like any other sort of law, uh, right? Like, I, uh, you know, people act like people who are uh, classical liberals, libertarian types like myself uh, don't want any rules at all. And it's like, no, that's not what we're talking about. You know, they say, who will build the roads? Well, um, private companies have always built roads. People have always built roads. Uh, governments can do that, but have you seen them taking care of the roads lately? They don't do a very good job of it. Anyways, let's get back to this. Like Snopes, PolitiFact has a history of misleading the public. In late January 2019, PolitiFact, Snopes, and FactCheck.org raced to squash the notion that coronavirus and its treatments were patented. They reviewed only three of the 4,452 publicly available patents, which unmistakably show that SARS coronavirus detection and treatment had been widely patented by both the public and private sectors. Facebook's founder pledged to the WHO, saying they would remove false claims and block exploitative ads. They're working with the World Health Organization and with the NHS, so they have a hotline, if you like, from those official sources. Wikipedia is the go-to destination for introductions to people, places, and things. Even the all-knowing Amazon Alexa calls on this digital encyclopedia. Alexa, who is Dr. Judy Mikovits? According to Wikipedia, Judy Ann Mikovits is a former American research scientist who is known for her discredited medical claims. She has been described as an anti-vaccination activist and a promoter of conspiracy theories, and has been accused of scientific misconduct. Wikipedia is supported by the Wikimedia Foundation, a nonprofit parent organization with a long history of politically tied funders. Many named, many anonymous. What exactly does a Wikipedia donor receive in exchange for their generosity? What began as an unbiased open source platform is now weaponized to undermine the work and reputation of anyone deemed a threat to its stakeholders. And once they smear you, they lock you out from making corrections to your own bio. In summary, most independent fact checkers are neither independent nor factual. Simply put, they are political spin machines. And so what they have done is they've decided that there's an approved narrative. If it is in line with the CDC's public pronouncements, and if it's in line with the World Health Organization's public pronouncements, it is presumed to be correct. I don't have to remind many Americans that the Center for Disease Control was the one that said you should use DDT in your homes. Used right, it is absolutely harmless. To you. DDT, people. This is why you should not be relying on, on experts and uh, centralized organizations. You have to rely on your own mind and yourself or, or people you personally know and trust People that you believe are going to at least do the best job that they can to tell you the truth. And that's what I am trying to do with you now. Humans and animals. Remember the name, DDT. It spells threat and death. A scientific panel today reported that pesticides may indeed represent a grave threat to mankind. Remember the swine flu scare of 1976? That was the year the U.S. government told us all that swine flu could turn out to be a killer? And Washington decided that every man, woman, and child in the nation should get a shot to prevent a nationwide outbreak, a pandemic. Well, 46 million of us obediently took the shot. Did anyone ever come to you and say, there's the possibility of neurological damage if you get into a mass immunization program? No. No one ever did? No. I can't believe that they would say that they did not know that there were neurological illnesses associated with influenza vaccination. That simply is not true. We did know that. Uh, and he's lying. I guess you would have to um, make that assumption. Then why does this report from your own agency list neurological complications as a possibility? You didn't feel it was necessary to tell the American people that information. 
Dr. Sensor's CDC also helped create the advertising to get the public to take the shot. The vaccines are safe, so roll up your sleeve. And now... Now, the other week I showed you uh, studies trying to convince people to get th this uh, uh, potential vaccination that's come out. Interestingly, Russia developed a vaccine, supposedly. I don't think that they actually did. And um, they're, they're trying to discredit Russia. There w will be no vaccine that is essentially uh, world globally um, taken in unless the World Health Organization approves of it or the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. That's just what's going to happen, people. Like, the writing's on the wall with this. It has nothing to do with what, what, what reality is. It has everything to do with who are the power players and, and this globalist cabal. Most Americans are claiming damages from Uncle Sam amounting to three and a half billion dollars. By far the greatest number of the claims, two-thirds of them, are for neurological damage or even death. There are serious concerns tonight about how well the CDC controls dangerous germs at its own labs after yet another safety lapse. For the third time in a month, the CDC acknowledged deadly pathogens were handled incorrectly in government labs. Now, this is why they ended up outsourcing to Wuhan. I'm, uh, I'm not going to cover any more of this. You can find this yourself. I would not look this up on Google. Go to DuckDuckGo. I'm sure it'll come right up. Um... Here's a little meme I thought I would bring up because I, I just thought it was funny. So this was uh, mass. This is for smoke, uh, painting, mining, pesticides, all pretty serious masks, radioactivity, and then the deadliest virus in history where almost everyone dies at uh, life expectancy. Um, anyways, I had this uh, this little thing here from the the airport when I traveled a few weeks back. And it says, not a medical device, that's interesting, helps filter out certain airborne particles. Well, which ones? Is there anything about microns or anything on here? I like this little thing too. I was pointing this out to my wife. It says, uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. It says, warning, cancer, uh, www.p65warnings.ca.gov. That's California because everything in California, they, they tell you causes cancer. But uh, that does make you wonder what this, what is in this. And then, of course, this is made in China. China. And then it has a warning, literally says, medical use prohibited, personal general use. That is <laughs> basically worthless. It's basically, it basically does nothing. Um, so I, I wanted to jump over here to uh, play a little bit from... Uh, from Dave Collins, uh, computing forever. Uh, again, great YouTuber. He has been all over this stuff. Um, this particular one is new world order rising. This was back in June, but, uh, I just wanted to show you some things from him. I'm only going to play a few minutes. As I've said before, these rules will destroy the high street and pubs, bars, restaurants. They will close in short order. All small businesses will be destroyed and hundreds of millions of people globally will be unemployed, making them reliant on government for welfare, or as is increasingly being suggested in several countries, universal basic income. So that's money for doing nothing. You know, it's really weird. When it comes to picking up things like these shopping bags, they have to be disinfected <coughs> on a regular basis. Funny how items in grocery stores don't have to be disinfected in this way. People can pick up cans of beans or bags of rice, hold them in their hands, and then put them back down on the shelf if they decide not to buy them. Hardware stores can be open to customers, but not schools or universities, although they are starting to open now with ridiculous social distancing rules. Meat processing plants have to close in many countries, but not Amazon warehouses. Hmm, really makes you think. I want to move on now and talk about something that's been happening behind the scenes, which is very rare. Now, here's the thing too, like in a meat processing plant, often people will be wearing masks so they're not spitting accidentally all over the food you're not getting that in uh an amazon plan i worked for fedex briefly um i can tell you the way those those plants operate is, is very high pace it's very strenuous work it's hard work um but the the reality is is they're just trying to get stuff out as quickly as possible um so they, they'll talk about safety but in the end uh, you know safety be damned 
relevant. It's what the World Economic Forum calls the fourth industrial revolution. <laughs> that doesn't sound like something right out of Soviet Russia or anything. It's well worth subscribing to Spiriscorus. He does fantastic work on this whole crisis and on Agenda 21. I'm going to include some clips from one of his recent videos here, and he's done a great job on this. Now, I'm sure that many of you are familiar with the Hegelian dialectic, which is problem, reaction, solution. If you have a goal of, let's say, global governance, you may not be able to just roll this out because you'll be met with resistance. Now, if you don't know about the, Hege the Hegelian dialectic, this is actually what the, the, the neocons and the neolibs represent in our government. That's why we never, we're perpetually in wars, we're perpetually doing these global treaties that aren't good for America, but expanding globalism. We are perpetually involved in, um, in these global organizations and eroding the national sovereignty. Um, you may recall back in the early 2000s, they scrapped it, but around 2006 or so, there was a, a big giant NAFTA super highway that they were talking about building. And they were talking about an, introducing the North American Union. That would be the United States, Canada, and Mexico, maybe some of the Central American nations as well. But uh, at least the, the three big ones of Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. And they were gonna, going to have the Amero come out. Now, this, again, was not some conspiracy theory. This is like, this is openly talked about. You just have to do your research. And the research really isn't that hard, or at least it didn't used to be. Um, Google will bury things now. They will manipulate the algorithm. They will try to hide things from you. And there may be little to no justification for this agenda. So you engineer a crisis, in this case, a global health pandemic, a scenario we have seen war gamed in documents such as the 2010 Rockefeller lockstep document and event 201, the tabletop exercise and simulation of a global coronavirus pandemic. That was sponsored by the World Economic Forum, Johns Hopkins, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which took place last October. This crisis, which I believe to be... Now, he means October 2019, immediately before the pandemic started. Now, I'm not saying that they were involved in releasing this. The, uh, the virus, most likely, by all accounts, except for if you listen to the Washington Post... <laughs> But anyways, by all accounts, it was engineered. It was engineered because they, they make these viruses super strong so they can kind of um, figure out how to defeat them. This virus is not super strong. It's actually rather weak. Um, and again, it, it, the, the people it's killing off have very serious health conditions or are already at life expectancy. The engineered produces a desired response a controlled demolition of the global economy, wiping out the middle class, creating more dependency upon the government in the form of stimulus money and bailouts, which essentially equate to ownership. Absolutely spot on. And at this point, I want to alert you to an interview that I did with economist Ernst Wolf back in April, in case you didn't see it, which was about the controlled collapse of the global financial system. That's also linked below. We this was a, a, a great um, interview, by the way. Now, I'm not going to play this whole thing. You go check it out. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure Dave would not care that I am showing you this. Obviously, he's using someone else. This is all about getting information out, people, because you, you, you need to be aware of the realities. So this is Event 201. This is their actual website. They have videos that you can go find uh, that Plan Plandemic uh, 2 video will show you um, clips from this. Uh, they show you in that video clips from it. Um, just for the sake of time, I, I'm, I'm not going to show you those clips, but it is eerie. It is quite eerie. And again, if you are going to keep yourself informed, go look that stuff up. So this says Event 201 was a 3.5 hour pandemic tabletop exercise that simulated a series of dramatic scenario based uh, fac facilitated discussions confronting difficult, true-to-life dilemmas associated with uh, response to a hypothetical but scientifically plausible pandemic. Fifteen global businesses, governments, and public health leaders were players. And the simulation exercise that highlighted unresolved real-world policies and economic issues that could be solved with sufficient political will, financial investment, and attention now and in the future. This exercise... Can 
consisted of pre-recorded news broadcasts. They literally did this. And they, go watch that pandemic video, they are almost mirrored to what we saw on the broadcast news later on. Live staff briefings and uh, moderated discussions on specific topics. These issues were carefully designed in a compelling narrative that educated the participants and the audience. The Johns Hopkins Centers for Health Security, World Economic Forum, and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation jointly propose these recommendations. So again, I'm not going to read all this. Go do your own homework. Um, but look, man. Here are some highlight reels. I will play this very briefly. Take this off dark mode. Herds. Gradually far and in healthy look. Now, if you didn't notice, that was a coronavirus. This was from pigs. This was actually one of the ways that they they believed that the transmission had happened was through pigs. Not bats, as originally was reported pigs months perhaps years ago a new coronavirus spread silently within herds gradually farmers started getting sick infected people got a respiratory illness with symptoms ranging from mild flu-like signs to severe pneumonia the sickest required intensive care many died experts agree unless it is quick this was last october October. ...controlled, it could lead to a severe <laughs> pandemic, an outbreak that circles the globe and affects people everywhere. The mission of the Pandemic Emergency Board is to provide recommendations to deal with the major global challenges arising in response to an unfolding pandemic. The board is... Okay, so there's that. Here's a fake doctor. That may help. But it's going to be difficult. I am not optimistic about having the vaccine in time to be relevant during this pandemic. So the policy crisis in question for this board in this meeting is this. How should governments, business, and international organizations allocate and distribute pandemic antivirals and medical supplies to the people who need them most? What we've seen work uh, very well in the HIV field is, in fact, procurement through the globe. So, I mean, I get the idea that these people are supposed to be the experts and they're trying to figure this thing out. But it is highly suspect that this occurred uh, immediately before uh, all this happened. So switching gears here a little bit. I just wanted to highlight this. This is uh, from Tim Pool today. It was a very good video about how a BLM activist um, is basically on the run uh, 4chan has done this over and over again over the years with Antifa people. And finally, Facebook is banning Antifa. Now, I'm not super happy about that because I'm not happy about tech censorship in any way, shape, or form. However, these people are violent. Um, along with the Antifa bans, though, they're also banning people who are into QAnon. Now, I'm not into to the whole Q thing, but I, I watch plenty of stuff that people are into it. I, I think it's just a LARP, but that's just me. Um, they, they, they're getting rid of like militia three percenter people. Well, I can tell you right now that those people are not proactively trying to overthrow the government They're They train in a way that is to be responsive in case there is government force or an infringement on people's rights, or, you know, they're, they're, they're basically a countermeasure is the way they see themselves. They're not they're trying to change anything as Antifa is being the terrorist organization they are. And they're also uh, talking about the Boogaloo boys. Now the Boogaloo is some thing that, that is basically just, you know, it's a funny word. It's slang. It's not a reality. The media tries to make it a thing where the right wants to have the Boogaloo and meaning a, a civil war. But the reality is, is who's out in the streets. It, it's radical communists who want civil war. And they're and and where there are small skirmishes. There have been small skirmishes for over six years now, maybe up to eight years from the Antifa side and BLM. Um, so watch this. Tim did, did a really good job today with this. I do watch a lot of his stuff because he's a very great news aggregate and I respect his opinion, even though I don't always agree with him. Um, here's another one that you should check out. And this is uh, from uh, Don't 
Walk Run Productions. And Andrew here does a very good breakdown of the history of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and the um, the nature of basically their their debates and then and then this this uh, this pick now. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are, are under the impression that uh, the Democrats just don't want to win. And that that might be true. That might might be true. They they might not know what to do. Um, but they definitely they, they've been pushing conspiracies about uh, the mail service, which has been in trouble for a very long time. Uh, I don't know about you, but about the only thing I get in the mail is uh, junk or I get like, uh, you know, my water sewer bill, which I pay online anyways. Um, so people just don't use the mail much anymore. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's had problems for a long time. But the left is trying to do anything to create conspiracy theories. They just call Congress back in to fund uh, the post office. They want to um, and like they are literally consp- like I'm talking about conspiracy fact. But they are literally throwing out theories. Um, by the way, speaking of Tim, you should check out J- Jack Murphy, uh, who's on Tim's uh, podcast last night. A very good interview. Jack Murphy's awesome. You know, I've seen his stuff before. Follow him on Twitter. I'm not very active there, but uh, I have nothing to really to do with my channel on there. But in any case, it, Twitter can be a great news aggregate. But um, yeah, there's there's just a lot of stuff going on right now, guys, with... Um, with uh the democrats and their craziness they they apparently uh distanced themselves from lindo sarsores they played the pledge of allegiance they they're trying to be all patriotic now and uh the reality is is they they've let our great cities crumble in new york um i saw a video paul joseph watson put out now paul joseph watson is a propagandist he's just a right-wing propagandist but regardless uh prop not all propaganda is lies um that's not the point of propaganda necessarily, although sometimes it is. But uh, like New York's in a, in a really bad shape, man, really bad shape. And, uh, you know, I was just up there right before the, the, the pandemic. And um, of course, we were in the uh, new Rochelle area, which is a little bit uh, north of the city. But still, um, that was AOC old stomping grounds. But um, still, uh they're they're they've been in bad shape for a long time the blasio is bringing it downhill and they are returning to the 1970s i talked about this in my cyberpunk video um and the callback to the joker and uh the taxi driver movie which um is is a very realistic view of how new york city is about to go so I wanted to bring this up because we, we did t- touch on some uh, commie stuff and I'm always going to be talking about it because it's it's so prevalent in our society today. It's just ridiculous. So this book, Shakedown Socialism, is very good. You should uh, get a copy of it. It's like 125 pages, very not large text, um, just outstanding from somebody who grew up under the Soviet bloc system. So I'm going to scroll down here real quick. And just read you a a little uh, excerpt from the author's words. It says, some years ago, I escaped the shipwreck of the Soviet workers' paradise, and I moved to the United States, making a conscious choice between the forced inequality of socialism, inequality, okay, because that is what happens. You have the haves who control everything, and everyone else is a have-not. And then you kind of have like a military class, much like Plato's Republic. And the volunteer uh, material inequality of capitalism. That's right voluntary and voluntarily and unequal because we're always all unequal i didn't expect to be rich i only wanted an opportunity to earn an honest income without sacrificing my dignity i wanted the freedom to pursue my own choices and aspirations not the ones prescribed by the state i wanted to live in a country where my success or failure would depend on my own honest effort and not the whims of a bureaucrat. I wanted my relations with people to be based on voluntary agreements, not mandatory requirements. And finally, I want my earnings to be protected by law from wanton um, expropriation. So he's got some left, right, and that's that's absolutely correct. You go left, you get poverty. You go to the right, you get wealth. Here's a few chapters. Again, it's not a very dense read, but it is a great book. And the guy was a propaganda artist in the former Soviet Union. He's from uh, Ukraine, if I'm not mistaken. So let's take a little quick excerpt here. My guest at the bar tonight grew up in the Soviet Union, where he once worked for the Communist Party, creating propaganda posters. 
He emigrated to the United States in 1994, and he hosts the political satire website, thepeoplescube.com. He also has a new book out called Shakedown Socialism. He requested Guinness. Please welcome Oleg Atbashian. Dostrovia um, means health to health. It's a, a, a Russian cheers, right? So if you ever drink with Russians, uh, Dostrovia is the uh, is, is the word to say. I guess you technically requested Guinness with some beet vodka, you said. Spiked with beet vodka. Spiked, but right. we couldn't, it's hard to find beet vodka. Right. Although it should be, we're near the UN around here, so I'm sure somebody's stockpiling <laughs> it somewhere. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I, I wanted to have you on the show because I like your website, uh, thepeoplescube.com. It's, um, it's political satire, uh, but it's from a different perspective of somebody who grew up in the Soviet Union. You grew up in the Ukraine. Right. Uh, this is a spoof of the progressive ideology uh, under the slogan, we cure weak liberalism with strong communism. And we pretend to be a hardline Stalinist commissars, like a Stalinist Politburo, commenting on the current events uh, happening in the world and the United States. Why do you think it is we, we, we have this romantic view of things like, that have been proven throughout history to be kind of lousy? Uh, it's me. I could never understand it. Even the first, uh, when I came here, I was surprised at uh, this level of adoration that the leftist intellectual had for the Soviet Union and its system and uh, the, all these socialist ideas. And I couldn't figure what was going on, really. Um, so when I was um, living in New York in this big liberal bubble, and uh, the only sources of information that I had were the New York Times and the NPR, so uh, I was fooled once again. You know, living in the USSR, I was fooled once when I was little. There were, I was told that the future of the uh, world is communism, and there is no other way, and it's such a beautiful society, and we would all live happily there without the need to... Um, uh, try hard and uh, will it be provided with everything. It's like extended childhood, not what's not to like. What is the people's cube? <clears throat> Isn't that interesting? He just said it's like extended childhood. I, not only I found this because I looked up his website today uh, for the book. Um, I've had this book for, uh, I don't know, 10 years now. Uh, maybe not quite that long, but but for quite a long time. Um, but uh isn't it quite interesting that he said it's extended childhood? And what is the point that I keep making to everyone of what uh, left progressivism is? It is a libertine philosophy that takes all responsibility away from the individual and makes the state your mommy and your daddy. Because you've got a Rubik's Cube sitting there that looks different. Right. You all know what the Rubik's Cube is, but uh, this is a politically correct correct version of the, people, of the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> all colors are equal, all sides. It's gloriously red on all sides. And every square is equal, but also every player is equal. And it guarantees the equality of results. And nobody is uh, too smart, nobody is too slow anymore. To each of their and abilities, yada, yada. Right, nobody is a boob with the people's cube. <laughs> and it's uh, approved by the teacher's union and uh -huh. uh, model for the coming education reform. And you sell these on your website? I do, but uh, I'm down to my last one. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, so it's a, it's a traditional Soviet uh, to invest production system. some money into producing more. Okay. I'm going to... So you get the gist. A uh, very funny guy. Uh, gr great uh, satire. And, and um, although he's Ukrainian, so I don't want to call him Russian, but uh, very much in line of uh, Soviet humor. If you have any friends from the former Soviet bloc, as I do, um, you would you would understand. Um, here is another great video for you guys to check out that uh, Sargon put out today. Um, it's a new Call of Duty game, Mame Streams, Yuri uh, Bezmanov. And, and, and Carl does a great job of breaking down all the points. Now, I've kind of gone through this before, but I've never played anything from Yuri because, again, it's dangerous to my little, little, tiny channel. But, uh, hey, you know, we'll do what we got to do. So, without further ado, let's listen to Mr. Uh, Bezmanov. Well, you spoke several times before about ideological subversion. That is a phrase that uh, I'm afraid some Americans don't fully understand. When uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? 
ideological subversion is is the slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, активные мероприятия in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. Now, that's what all of the wokeness is about, is no sensible conclusions. Um, I'm going to let him continue to speak. But, th th like, you guys have to understand, this was G. Edward Griffin of the John Birch Society talking about this stuff back in 1984. Besmanov used to go on talk shows like Donahue and, and give classes on this stuff. He no longer wanted to participate in the system, and then he felt his life was in threat. Um, of, of danger, but he was doing this over in India. And as you all may very well know, India has moved away from their communist roots because communism does not work. And I don't care what blue haired idiot says otherwise. It's a great brainwashing uh, process, which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values. Now, this is what I talked about uh, yesterday and the day prior of how academia has been taken over. This is just a fact, people. I, like, if you're going to dispute that, that the institutions of America are not socialistic and, and not communistic, then you are participating in the biggest lie ever told. Academia is far left. So much so, the only things that they have not fully infiltrated yet is STEM. And STEM is starting to get it. Um, it has been utterly corrupt for at least 30 years and has been, has been uh, corrupted since at least the 1960s. There was some corruption prior to that, but especially in the 1960s and a lot of that had to do with bringing in uh postmodernists and allowing them to teach here also uh defectors from the soviet union who were you know pro-communism of americanism american patriotism the demoralization process in the united states is basically completed already uh for the last 25 years Actually, it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. What is truth? As Pilate said to Christ, what is truth? <laughs> Have you ever heard someone say something so so asinine? Um, my favorite is, is, don't judge me. Well, you just judged me. You just made a judgment. Um, you know, the idea, like, what is human nature? Uh, human beings, do we even have a nature? Of course we do. Like, but this is what he's talking about. Um, you know, the postmodernist view is that there can be no facts. It's all about power. Everything's about power structures. So, and, and, and they did that largely because they had communism, Marxism on their mind, and they couldn't justify the economics of it. So what they did instead is they played with your brain. And, and they say there is no objective reality. Reality is whatever you want to make it. Which is interesting because I, I, I think if I, you know, 
pushed you off a cliff and you fell, you know, a couple hundred feet and you died, that you would be objectively dead for real. I'm pretty sure that would happen. Now, maybe you survived. Who knows? But <laughs> to say that there is no objective reality is just absolute absurdity. And that is what all this demoralizing is about. They're demoralizing us now with this pandemic that isn't even a pandemic. If you see the, uh, the death rates are not really going up. I saw uh, what well, I didn't see. I heard when I was getting my hair cut the other day at the barber shop. Um, CNN t talking to some expert saying that we're in route by the end of the year to have 350,000 deaths in the United States. <clears throat> well, I don't think so. We're, we're <laughs> we would have to double what, where we're at now in the next four months. And, uh, August is almost over. So, um, there, there's so much propaganda. There's so much nonsense. And the people in the media, a lot of them know, a lot of them understand, but they're, uh, they're getting paid big money, man. And they don't have any morals. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his balls, then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic. Of yes, and this is the same thing that Solzhenitsyn pointed out. You know, and this is what I talk about being ideologically possessed. When you are possessed by an idea, it is literally your, your spirit has been corrupted. And because you don't have a connection with God, which is one of the first things that the Soviets do is they destroy religion and have to replace religion with the state, which is what many of you on the left are doing out there. You have created yourself a secular religion because human beings cannot operate without that spiritual that that spiritual side that that attitudinal portion of life and i'm seeing some people wake up now with this but there are still so many others that are afraid and absolutely lost within what is going on the situation of demoralization the next stage is destabilization this time subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption whether you eat junk food and get fat and flabby it doesn't matter anymore this time and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation. Uh, it's, what, what matters is essentials, economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense and economy, uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in... So think about this, defense and economy. What happened? We had the greatest economy that the United States has, has seen in, in, in at least 50 years or more. Um, historic, uh, historically low unemployment. Um, the left, the Democrats are trying to say, well, Trump inherited that from Obama. That is absolutely absurd. I know lefties will tell me that I because they're idiots and, and lefties don't like to study economics or to listen to guys like Paul Krugman, who, despite seemingly uh, having a understanding of economics, is uh, is spouting off utter nonsense, utter Keynesian uh, nonsense. That would be Lord Maynard Keynes, so who was the the primary economist behind um, many uh, of the New Deal type um controls the the loosely fascist controls um centralized economy essentially uh, it just doesn't it doesn't work in the long term you know you're robbing peter to pay paul essentially but the other thing is is he was talking about the the, the national defense and what are we seeing now so we had the economy collapse because of this virus and the democrats want to play games and blame the orange man because orange man tried to shut down the borders created a coronavirus task force in the uh, early months, uh, back in January, I believe, at the, toward the end of January. And they just called him a racist and said he was being stupid. And now they're, they're going back like they always do. And they're being dishonest and lying. And many of you are so stupid that you'll fall for it. I, I mean, literally, you're, you're that dumb. And, and I, I mean stupid by what the definition of the word stupid means. You know better, but you do it anyways. This part of the world that the process will go that fast. 
Uh, the next stage, of course, is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. You can see it in, in Central America now. And after crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure, and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may last indefinitely. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis, to promise people all kinds of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition, and to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C. Um, now... We've all heard the phrase, the new normal. It's been going around quite a bit. This is not the new normal, people. I refuse. I do not consent. And you should not either. And if you have politicians that are saying things like that, then you need to kick them out of office. Now, maybe you think the utopia will come. I promise you. If you're one of those people, unless you're in power, you're going to be one of the first to get the axe. You will be lined up against the wall. This is how it goes. So with all that, um, I plan to get back to what I was talking about before as far as, as politics, um, political dispositions, and, and delving into a deep dive uh, probably tomorrow, if not Monday for sure. Um, unless, you know, so, uh, you know, my wife or daughter gets sick again because <laughs> I had two weeks of that. But in any case, this has been All Minus One. My name is Bill. If you like this, please like, share, and subscribe. Go check out my... Uh, my live stream on D live every Wednesday at 7 PM. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it this week, but go check it out. Um, and, or look at the, uh, the, uh, YouTube page, which is called the ends justify the memes. We reupload there later because YouTube is, uh, horrible with censorship and hopefully my channel can slip through the cracks and not get banned for this one. So I wish you all well and, uh, have a good evening.